GSW Energy has signed an MOU with GSW Steel for a green hydrogen project and Vikas Srivastav caught up with Sharad Mahendra, joint MD and CEO of GSW Energy, about the purpose of the new project and its viability. Listen in. So I would like to start with this new project that you have started for uh, uh, you know, your uh, group company, JSW Steel. What is the entire purpose of this and how it's going to benefit both the companies? Yeah. See, uh, when we say about green hydrogen, that is where like global plans by 2030 is to have a green hydrogen capacity in excess of 60 million tons, which is a large capacity. And we also want to be future ready as uh, one of the to be the major supplier of green hydrogen uh, in the energy space. And also uh, our uh, group company, JSW Steel, for which we are setting up this project, which is the largest country's largest green hydrogen uh, project. Uh, for them also, to, uh, like they have a plan of to be manufacture green, green steel, for wherein green hydrogen plays a key role. So it is a pilot project which we have started, the work which we have started on ground, uh, which will make us uh, ready as a supplier and JSW Steel as a user of green hydrogen. So this will give us a long, a big learning. And as we have entered also into an MOU with uh, our group company, JSW Steel, for uh, 90,000 tons of green hydrogen by 2030. So this is a pilot project, which is country's largest project, which is 3,800 tons of hydrogen per annum. Uh, which is uh, equivalent to 25 megawatt capacity of uh, energy, solar energy. So this is what the groundwork has started, project work at, uh, on ground. And we are confident that uh, in quarter four of current fiscal, this project will be commissioned. Okay. Okay. So you said this is one of the largest project in India that you will have done. So recently we also met uh, the management of Gale and they said that the issue or the challenge that they are facing for their project that they all are setting up is that the pricing is still very high. It's close to 500, 600 rupees per kg, where the commercial viability of that becomes slightly, you know, challenging and finding customers because gray hydrogen is available at, you know, less than one third of that price. Yeah. So what according to you is, you know, going to be the viability of this project? I mean, if, would you like to only stick with the captive projects or you would be looking at commercial uh, yeah. projects as yes. well? Yes, uh, I agree that uh, the, today the price levels cost which are there are on a higher side as compared to the grey hydrogen. But in this particular project, uh, one, say one uh, portion of the cost which is significant is the uh, storage mm. uh, of hydrogen and then supply. Here there is no storage, so that which has resulted in uh, optimizing the cost and giving us the desired returns what on which benchmark returns what, at which JW Energy works. Uh, here there is a direct pipe, it's a co-located co plant okay. where the GSW steel manufacturing facilities are there. It in the same uh, facilities mm -hmm. where we have our GSW energy facilities are there. So we are produce, uh, make, uh, commissioning, going to commission this project there. And it's a direct supply through the pipeline, which has uh, uh, reduced the cost and has given us the desired returns. But yes, going forward is still uh, when uh, taking care of the captive requirement and also uh, looking towards uh, the possibilities outside, we are going to be ready after this after the commissioning of this project. And as and when we see that the costs are optimizing, the prices are such that it is giving us the desired benchmark returns. <laughs> we will be open for even outside the group captive requirement. Mm. And not only this, even going downstream, whether ethanol, methanol, or green ammonia. All these areas also we, our, we are continuously exploring. And as I said, as and when we are getting the desired returns, we will be going ahead in that also. All right. So just to take it a little more, uh, you know, if you can highlight a little more on this uh, and give more details in terms of what is the cost of pricing you are getting it if you are setting up a project without storage and with storage? Uh, see, uh, as I told you that when we uh, do a project with the storage, and without the storage, apart from storage, there are many other factors also, but there is definitely a significant 20-25% cost optimization, which happens if you are not setting up a storage facility and directly supplying uh, through the uh, pipeline. Mm. So that is what we uh, allowed us to venture and get the desired returns on this pilot project. But it, it, this project also should be seen that uh, protecting our returns and also it is 
being a largest uh, green hydrogen plant uh, also as a learning also uh, i take this for us as jsw energy and also for jsw steel to be future ready uh, when it is giving uh, at, at the cost uh, optimizes so if we are also making ourselves future ready for with this project right. uh, one more last question on this topic uh, last time when we met that you had said you are kind of you know fast tracking your overall uh, investments yeah. of close to 12 billion dollars to reach your 20 gigawatt by uh, say 2030 which you are now planning to achieve yeah. before, by 2028 or something like that yeah. so what percentage of that investment uh, would be uh, towards say green hydrogen and you know related areas see uh, one is that 20 gigawatt when we had said by by 30 was pure generation capacity okay uh, all storage capacities whether uh, green hydrogen or storage capacity is over and above that so uh, when we talk, talk of the capacity we had said 20 gigawatt by by 30 as you are right and uh, the first milestone was the first phase was 10 gigawatt by by 25 the current fiscal right, yeah. so uh, i am happy to tell that we are absolutely on track to achieve the numbers of uh, phase 1 of uh, 10 gigawatt plus we are absolutely certain that in the current fiscal we will be crossing that number of 10 gigawatt and we are uh, working on our uh, cap uh, uh, capacity addition target Uh, to reach a capacity by by 30 then that is the time when we will be uh, working on we are continuously working to announce a revised number for by 30 because this 20 gigawatt of by 30 number is definitely happening significantly earlier with the kind of order books and our participation and being successful in the competitive bid space uh, the kind of capacity order book which we have so we are on track to deliver what we have said a uh, few weeks earlier to you also that uh, we will be fast tracking our growth so we are absolutely on track coupled with this green hydrogen as i talk apart from that the energy storage right. because before i come uh, to the details of our energy storage plan uh, it is important to note that uh, what is the kind of demand growth and the growth pattern see see we are seeing a, a growth is demand growth continuing and first two months have demonstrated that with the extreme weather condition driven mm -hmm. with other factors of urbanization manufacturing everything the demand growth is healthy and will continue to remain in that range even if we take a conservative demand growth of say 6 7% mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. that also in energy terms means a significant number if we see last year has ended with a country's demand in energy terms of almost close to 16 25 billion units and even if i take a 6 7% conservative demand growth uh, which means every year at least 125 to 130 billion units are required mm. for which when we convert in the megawatt capacity additions what will be required uh, is even if assuming 5 to 6 gigawatt every year thermal will also get added balance 20 out of the 20 gigawatt mm. capacity which is required to meet this incremental energy every year If 15 gigawatt mega gigawatt is required, which if from renewable energy space, whether it is wind, whether it is solar, or some part from hydro, it is at least three times the capacity which is required. So 45 to 50 gigawatt of capacity addition in wind, solar, and hydro is required uh, to meet the country's demand. Right. Uh, because thermal has reached close to about 69, 70 percent PLF. Mm. and large portion of the thermal capacity is old so going beyond 70% significantly on a annualized basis is uh, going to be a challenge so the requirement is going to be met by from the green energy sport is to okay. uh, apart from that we have to understand that state to state the pattern of energy demand is very different mm -hmm. if i compare a state like bihar which is predominantly a <laughs> agriculture driven economy there the energy pattern on a 24 hour basis is very different if we compare with maharashtra or tamil nadu or karnataka which is a manufacturing driven mm. or a service driven economy uh, is very different so there that is where the storage plays a role we are seeing that the energy demand during the peak has almost reached mm. 250 gigawatt right. uh, in uh, mm. uh, in, this month, in this month itself so to meet that peak demands uh, it is the storage which is going to play a key role and that, that is where we had said earlier that we'll be going into Uh, the battery energy storage i am happy to tell that we have started on ground the project work of asia's largest uh, battery energy storage of 1 gigawatt hour 
which yeah. will take care of the evening peaks also and also will be catering uh, contributing toward the grid stability also which is going to be uh, a major requirement with so much of solar and wind energy there mm -hmm. uh, so we have already started the work and we are absolutely confident that uh, uh, between quarter four of current fiscal and quarter one this entire capacity or, or quarter one of next mm -hmm. year this entire capacity will be commissioned where exactly is this this is located in the uh, state of rajasthan rajasthan yes okay Okay, sir, you are so confident and optimistic about your project targets and everything you yeah. said you are fast tracking also. But with the change in the government that's uh, going to happen now with a coalition uh, government kind of, you know, coming up. So do you think there would be any kind of hurdles, any kind of challenges that might crop up in meeting these targets going in? No, and I also for the And also for the power sector reforms as far as... Yeah, goes. see, I am absolutely confident that there will not be any significant change and when we talk about the sector, if you see the last uh, uh, two, three years, the kind of uh, reforms which have take, uh, taken place, which have been implemented by the government. Uh, and if we see the three uh, entities which get impacted, one is the consumer right. of power, one is the discom and third is the generator. We see the kind of policy interventions which have uh, uh, been done and implemented has impacted all three in a positive way. Mm -hmm. uh, if we see consumer, the power outages have reduced significantly despite the peak demands rising every year significantly. The discoms, the financial health of the discoms have improved significantly and which has enabled the generators to uh, ensure the utilization of the facilities at a higher plant load factors mm -hmm. to meet the demand. So, and uh, with, uh, as I said, the uh, fundamentals of the country's economy remain strong uh, we don't see any any change uh, in terms of uh, the power demand uh, and the plans of the sector in general and the plans which we have laid down for next five years. The continuity is likely to remain there. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to NDTV Prophet. Sir. It was our pleasure talking.